see this line means we know that for today video we will again be doing some calculations so make sure you get ready with your calculator pen and papers so for this video today we will talk about topic 3.3 where we will focus on concentration the normal concentration that you will always see is molarity and today we are going to learn one more percentage by mass and also we are going to talk about density where density is the very close friend of concentration and also obviously we are going to do some calculations on molarity percentage by mass and density and before we go into concentration it's very important for you to know what is solute solvent and solution solute is a substance that dissolves in solvent the very simple example that i can give to you is milo powder so if you are having a milo powder that is your solute and where do you put your milo powder into you'll put your milo powder into a solvent where solvent is the medium where the solute dissolves in so your solvent for the milo powder will be hot water so you have your milo powder you have your hot water and then you produce your solution solution is formed when your solute is dissolved in the solvent so you will form your milo drink so that is your solute solvent solution so solute is not necessary only in solid solute can be in solid solute also can be in pure liquid for example other than milo powder other than milo drink we are making we can have sun quick orange all right when you have the pure sun quick orange from the bottle from the tesco you put into your ice water when you put into your ice water your ice water acts as a solvent and then you produce your orange juice and your orange juice will be the solution so i hope you are very clear with what is solute what is solvent what is solution these terms are very very important in learning concentration so concentration we have two molarity and percentage by mass but we will also talk about density because density is their best friend the first we look into molarity molarity symbol is capital m and molarity is the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution so make sure you know what is solute what is solution and the formula of molarity is this where the symbol of molarity is capital m is equals to mole of solute in mole divided by volume of solution in liter and that will give rise to the unit of mole per liter or mole per decimeter cube because one liter is equal to one decimeter cube so mole per liter or mole per decimeter cube they are the same or you can use the unit of m molar capital letter m let's look into the first example the first example we have sodium carbonate is known as a soda ash and is used in increasing ph of swimming pool a student weighed 27.45 gram of sodium carbonate and dissolved in a 250 ml of water calculate the molarity of the solution prepared the first thing after you read the question is to take out all the values take out all the information so the first information given by the question is i have mass of sodium carbonate and the mass of sodium carbonate given is 27.45 gram second thing that i have from the question is the volume of h2o the volume of h2o given is 250 milliliter the third thing that the question gave is the molarity the question asking for molarity so molarity is equals to how much and the first thing to do to get the molarity is by writing the formula of molarity we write the formula of what the question want so molarity is equals to number of mole of solute in mole over volume of solution 
in liter. Very important, the unit is in liter. After you write the formula of molarity, you will clearly see what do you need to get the molarity. So we need to find the number of mole of solute and we need to find the volume of solution. Your solute over here is actually your sodium carbonate. That is your solute. The question gives you the mass of solute, but the formula needs the number of mole of solute. So what do you do? We change it to number of mole. And mass changing to number of mole, we need the molar mass. So calculate the molar mass. Molar mass of sodium carbonate will equal to sodium 23 times 2 plus carbon 12 plus oxygen 16 times 3. Again, press your calculator, work out the mass, and the molar mass obtained is 106 gram per mole. When you have the molar mass of sodium carbonate and you have the mass, we find the number of mole. So number of mole of sodium carbonate will equal to the mass divided by molar mass. So the mass given in the question is 27.45. The molar mass that you calculated is 106 gram per mole. Therefore, the number of mole of sodium carbonate is 0 0.2590 mole and that is the number of mole of sodium carbonate so we are done with the number of mole of solute we need the volume of solution we know that the 27.45 gram of sodium carbonate is dissolved into 250 ml of water therefore in this case volume of water will be equal to the volume of solution so Volume of solution is equal to 250 milliliter, but we need to change the milliliter to liter. So we divide 1000. 250 milliliter divided by 1000. Therefore, volume of solution 0 0.25 liter. So you found the volume of solution in liter. You have the number of mole of solute. Can you find molarity? Simple, just put it in. So the number of mole of solute calculated 0 0.2590 mole. The volume of solution calculated in liter is 0 0.25 liter. Therefore, the answer will be 1.306 mole per liter. That is the molarity of this question. So a little tips over here. Before you do anything, Take out the data, take out the information, and write the formula of what the question was. That is the main thing, so that you know what you need to find. The next concentration that we will look into is percentage by mass. And percentage by mass is the percentage of mass of solute per mass of solution multiplied by 100%. And the formula looks something like this. This is the symbol of percentage by mass, where you can see the mass of solute over mass of solution times 100. And of course, the final answer unit will be in percentage because we are talking about percent. When you look into the formula, you realize that in the mass of solute and also in the mass of solution, I don't have any unit in here. That means it can be in any unit, it can be in gram, it can be in kilogram, but if the mass of solute is in gram, the mass of solution need to be in gram. The unit need to be the same. If they are having in the kilogram, both need to be in kilogram. That is the only requirement. The unit must be the same so that they can cancel off each other. Alright? Some tips for you over here. The mass of solution is actually equal to mass of solute plus mass of solvent. Bear that in mind, the unit need to be the same. If you have it in the gram, it need to be both in the gram. If you have it in the kilogram, both need to be in kilogram. So the unit need to be the same. The example that we have on the screen is oxalic acid. So your oxalic acid is an organic compound with a molecular formula of 
H2C2O4. Calculate the percentage by mass of oxalic acid when 1.33 mole of oxalic acid is added into 200 gram of water. And before we proceed to calculation, we take out all the information given by the question. So the first thing, the question says, number of mole of oxalic acid given is 1.33 mole. And then we have mass of water given is 200 gram. Question asking for percentage by mass. The first thing that we do is to write the formula of percentage by mass. And the formula of percentage by mass, if you remember, is the mass of solute over mass of solution times 100. And bear that in mind, the mass of solute and the mass of solution must be in the same unit. So let's look into what we have. We have number of mole of oxalic acid. So obviously, your oxalic acid over here is actually your solute. And the mass of water that you have over here, obviously, mass of solvent. So make sure you can identify what is solute, what is solvent, what is solution. We have number of mole of solute but we need mass of solute. So what do we do? We need to convert the number of mole to mass of the oxalic acid. And obviously, we need to work out the molar mass. The molar mass of oxalic acid, H2C2O4. So the molar mass of oxalic acid will be hydrogen times 2 plus with carbon times 2 plus with oxygen times 4. So work out the molar mass correctly. The molar mass is 90 gram per mole. So now you have the molar mass, you have the number of mole, and we can work out the mass of the solute, which is your oxalic acid. So 1.33 mole were times with 90 gram per mole you will have 119.7 gram. And that is the mass of solute that you need. And next, the question asking for mass of solution. How do we work out the mass of solution? We have the mass of solute, we have the mass of solvent. So we can work out the mass of solution. Because we know the mass of solution is actually equals to the mass of solute plus mass of solvent and mass of solute calculated 119.7 mass of solvent given 200 gram and the mass of solution is 319.7 gram and now you have mass of solution so you have mass of solute you have mass of solution your percentage by mass of the oxalic acid will be 119.7 divided by 319.7 times 100. And you will have 37.44%. And that will be the final answer of your percentage by mass. Next, we will look into the good friend of concentration, density. So what is density? Density is the mass per unit volume. Therefore, the formula looks like this. And if you look at this, that is the symbol of density. All right, rho. And if you look at the formula clearly, we have the mass of solution over volume of solution. And you realize that in my formula, I don't have any unit for the mass and I don't have any unit for the volume. That is because the unit of the density is various, depends on the condition. The mass can be in gram, can be in kilogram. The volume can be in liter, can be in milliliter. Therefore, the unit of the density will be very much depends on the unit of mass and also the unit of volume of solution. In the other words, when you are solving density question, make sure you know what is the unit of mass you are using and what is the unit of volume of solution you are using. And you need to work out the unit of density 
on your own. Alright, let's look into examples. In this example, we have 750 milliliter of sodium hydroxide solution is prepared by dissolving 18.55 gram of sodium hydroxide in 90 gram of distilled water. Calculate the density for the solution above. As always, we take out the information. So I have volume of solution. Volume of NaOH solution, 750 milliliter. And the question gives us the mass of NaOH is 18.55 gram. And then the question gives us mass of water is 90 gram. And question asking for density. And if you remember, the first thing that we do before we answer the question is to take out all the information. Next, we are going to write the formula of what the question asking for. So I need density. I will write the formula of density. Density equals to mass of solution over volume of solution. And then we are going to look into the information given by the question. Mass of solution, do we have it? No, we don't have the mass of solution. Volume of solution, do we have it? Yes, we have the volume of solution given, 750 milliliter. So we are done with the volume of solution. But mass of solution, how do we work out the mass of solution? We know that mass of solution is equal to the mass of solute plus mass of solvent. Who is your solute right now? Your NaOH is your solute. That is the mass of your solute. So mass of solute equals to 18.55 gram. Mass of solvent, 90 gram. Your water is your solvent. 108.55 gram. That is the mass of solution. So we have the mass of solution, we have the volume of solution. Put everything in. Mass of solution is 108.55 gram over volume of solution 750 milliliter. The answer is 0 0.1447 and the unit will be gram per milliliter. The unit is the highlight over here. So make sure you know how to work out the unit of a density. I want to remind you, the first and foremost thing is to memorize all the formula of your concentration and density, including the units. You need to know what is the unit before we can use the formula. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.